Now, today marks the seventh year anniversary of that awful terror attack on the Charlie Hebdo offices uh, in Paris. The assault on freedom of speech was one of the most shocking moments in Europe's fight against the scourge of terrorism. And joining me now in the studio is GB News home affairs and security expert Mark White. And Mark, we remember that day very well. And of course, it went on for a number of days after that as well. But just tell us about your memories of that day. Yeah, I mean, I think we all remember because mm. the, the video was so widely circulated, the very shocking moment that one of the police officers responding to that incident was shot and wounded, lying in the pavement and someone filming from a building above looking down sees the moment that this terrorist stands over that officer and shoots him dead. I mean, it was just appalling. Uh, and of course, in the offices themselves, uh, a number of staff and contributors to this satirical, yeah. uh, satirical magazine were killed. As you say, it continued really for a few days until that final standoff yeah. in a kosher supermarket that uh, brought this finally to an end. And then months later, towards the back end of the year, it was followed, of course, by the Bataclan right. attacks. More than 130 people killed there. Uh, absolutely shocking year, that 2015 into 2016 for Paris where, and France in general, where they had so many terrorist attacks. Uh, but it has still continued, really, in the year since. Not to the same degree, but they are still having... Uh, significant issues with Islamist extremism yeah. in particular. Uh, just at Christmas time there, uh, a couple of weeks before, they arrested uh, two people in connection with a planned Christmas attack that was either going to attack shopping centres uh, or other crowded places uh, using knives and uh, explosives. So it's still there, it's still going on. The police are being targeted as well. Last year, police officers... Uh, one was killed, another was injured in two separate attacks. So they have an, an ongoing problem. And at the time, uh, and I was looking back uh, at some of the reports from seven years ago today, it was very much seen as an attack on democracy because this was a satirical magazine. And of course, satire has been around our democracies for hundreds of years, Mark. Uh, and uh, it was really seen to be an attack on society, wasn't it? Yes, and it was all to do, of course, with the publication yeah. of images of the Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. um, which, of course, as far as... Uh, and uh, many Muslims are concerned is, you know, very, very insulting to their religion to have images of the, the prophet circulated. But of course, uh, as you say, this was seen right across France and the wider world as an issue around freedom of expression. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that magazine, and again today, continues yeah. to publish those images in defiance of the jihadists who would carry out murder uh, in the name of that prophet and the insult that they say they were suffered or and, subjected to, I should say. And as we were t talking about, uh, it continued for a couple of days, this attack, and uh, actually it was like a manhunt across northern France to try and track down, first of all, the two brothers that were involved, and then, as you say, it ended in a, in a supermarket. Yes, um, and it, it, the whole nation was on high alert. Mm. Clearly a very shocking event had yeah. taken place. It was similar, I think, the, the reactions of people in France to what was experienced here in the UK on 7-7 yeah. when we had those uh, terrible attacks on the London underground system and that bus in Tavistock Square. And of course, everybody on edge not knowing mm -hmm. where uh, the next attack might come from. And of course, that was followed two weeks later by the 21-7 failed attacks, and that really set people uh, on edge. And it was similar, I think, in France, with people re very worried about these terrorists on the run. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, they've known, as I say, a number uh, of terrorist attacks and tragedies. Uh, I was in Nice just last year when um, t an attack took place at the cathedral there, yes. and a poor uh, parishioner there was beheaded um, and others killed. I mean, it was just absolutely appalling. It continues on. Yeah. Uh, and there is, a, there is a battle at the moment uh, uh, in terms of the French president and the French government being seen as being actually uh, very anti-Islam uh, by those who are more extreme in their viewpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, that is 
sometimes being um, in, in terms of the uh, the extremist point of view manifesting itself in in these terrorist attacks, not just the plot at Christmas, but there is a, an investigation underway at the moment because of a bombing in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, mm. attacking French citizens there, taking part in the Paris to Dakar rally. So it's still ongoing. Yeah, so it's still there. And I mean, that, that's just what I was going to finish on, actually, Mark. What about the future risks? Because given this is a, a French presidential election year, the election's happening in April, surely there is a capacity for these sorts of things to escalate in the coming months? There is big concern. The, yeah. um, the, the French president has taken over, of course, uh, the presidency uh, of the European yes. Union. Uh, the elections are coming up. Uh, it is often a time uh, during election campaigns where the uh, extremists will look to target uh, French interests and to sow yeah. discourse and fear. So there is some real concern that that yeah. might be the case. Uh, and in this country as well, remember the terrorist threat currently is it severe. It's a yeah. Europe-wide problem. Uh, and here, the counter-terrorism police officers that I've been speaking to have issued a warning again today for people to be yeah. uh, extra vigilant, to uh, not let their guard down, despite the fact that, thankfully, we had no attacks over the festive period. Thankfully, indeed. Thank you, Mark, for, for joining me this afternoon. Thank you.